Hi everybody, Jeremy Pettis. Steve Edelman. So I don't know about you, Steve, but one of the kind of frequent comments I get from patients is, gosh, I bet Dr. Pettis, your blood sugars are just flat all day long, right? Or like, what do you eat in the morning? Yeah, really? like, how do you do it? How would you bolus for this? Like, you know, and so first of all, guess what? A little secret inside tip, our blood sugars are not perfect all the time. We have highs, we have lows. So it gave us this idea of let's film kind of a day in the life of what it's like being Jeremy Pettis and Steve Edelman. And so we actually took our iPhones and went through a couple days of scenarios where we were dealing with our diabetes, which is obviously all the time. And it actually, we didn't communicate at all about what we were filming, but it's kind of interesting, like the similarities that we had and you know some differences. So we're gonna take you through these clips and then comment on them. So we're gonna start with like how we started the, the day, both of us waking up, what happened overnight, and then we're gonna go from there. I think you'll relate to a lot of the experiences we had. Absolutely, so roll the first clip, Eric. Hello everybody, Steve Edelman here. 6 a.m., day in the life. Oh my gosh, it was a good night last night. I'm on a hyper-closed loop system, like my buddy Jeremy, blood sugar 116 and flat. And um, it wasn't long ago before these systems came around when I used to be drinking juice every night because I got low. And it's a different, it's a different world now, but stuff still happens and I still get low and get high. So don't think because I woke up with a good blood sugar, I'm always like this. So now I also keep a, a flashlight because I hate to admit it, but I might as well admit it, I'm afraid of the dark. And so when I get up at night, I got my flashlight. <laughs> now I'm gonna have my coffee and uh, something low carb for breakfast or just skip breakfast because I like to intermittent fast. Alrighty, man, you don't, wanna, you don't want me to keep this film going when I take these covers off. That's too scary. Talk to you later. Hi everybody. So this morning, I'm starting my kind of like day in the life thing. Um, I woke up with a blood sugar of about 110 or so, and I'm back on my Tandem Control IQ pump. I've been on different, you know, systems over the years. I was actually just on shots not that long ago, and waking up with a good blood sugar is just fantastic. So I'll show you um, kind of what happened overnight here. Um, you can see my blood sugars are really super flat. I almost kind of went low at one point, but then kind of came back up. That's as good as it gets. And again, it's not because I'm smart or I know what I'm doing. It's just that I have a system uh, that's working for me and have the basal rate pretty locked in so it can kind of modulate up or down. So, so far, first entry, doing well. I'm going to go get some coffee now. And even though I drink it black with like a little bit of Splenda, I usually bolus for that because the caffeine will make my blood sugars go up, even though there's not really that many carbs. So I might let you know how that goes too. See ya. And so that's how it started. Again, we didn't communicate, but we both started like with a good blood sugar, woke up, ready for the day, how we're kind of approaching eating or not, coffee. I think it's all good info. Yeah, and it reminds me of the olden days when we used to lecture on pumps versus multiple daily injections when they did not communicate with a CGM. And it turns out that now that pumps have the modulating basal rate, the overnight period is so much better. Yeah. And, it, and it's hard not to recommend a hybrid closed loop with automatic insulin delivery anymore. So, all right, we were crushing it in the morning. Guess what, here comes lunch. So let's see what happened when we actually started to eat. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm back. You saw me when I got out of bed. I didn't have anything to eat other than a cup of coffee. Now it's lunchtime at the taking control of your diabetes office and I have to make a decision what do I want to eat for lunch? So my first choice here is a bowl of tricks, which I love and I grew up with. And I just want to tell you 160 calories for one and a quarter bowls, 33 grams of carbs and Kashi's go really healthy. Get on your spandex type of cereal is basically 180 with 41 grams of carbs. So you add 50 calories of milk, and it's a delicious lunch with my latte. Now, just to let you know, mid-morning, I had a pretty healthy snack. I had some nuts and a couple of these peanut butter pretzels, and I gave myself three units of insulin. 
Blood sugar is even Steven, like you can't believe. In fact, to prove it to you, 132 straight across. Never crossed 180 since I woke up this morning. Now, just to let you know, um, I was the choice I was going to have for lunch is a pretty good choice. English muffin with two cheese sticks and some turkey. And believe it or not, that lunch is more calories than my cold cereal. Now, you could make an argument that Trix is sugary sweet cereal, but it is no different than Kashi. And that's my, that's my message of the morning. Eat what you like, what you feel like. Look at the calories, look at the labels, and do what the hell you want. I know my buddy Jeremy's out getting something like in and out You know, he treats himself like you can't believe. So <laughs> I'll talk to you later. All right, everybody. So I have a very important update on my day. So it is now lunchtime. I was doing my fasting all morning. But one of the downsides when you do that is it can make you really, really hungry. So guess where I am right now. Just picked up my In-N-Out Double Double. Oh, it's so good. So why did I get this? Well, first of all, is this good for me? Heck no. But occasionally I want an In-N-Out Double Double. So that's why I'm doing this. Also, because right after this, I'm going to go to the gym. So sometimes it's nice to eat your blood sugars a little bit higher so you can kind of like work it off when you go to the gym. Um, I got a Diet Coke with it, so that's okay. I skipped the fries. Why? Because it's a ton of carbs. And to be honest, unpopular opinion, I don't really love In-N-Out fries. and need to go kind of dry too quickly. So I don't want to waste carbs on something that I don't really like that much anyways. Sometimes I'll lettuce wrap these things, but today I figured I'd just go for the whole thing. I actually only bolus two units because like I said, it's an intentional under bolus to see, you know, the butchers will go up a little bit and kind of work them down at the gym. So that's fantastic. Last thing, what gym am I going to? Well, it's the YMCA. You know, I don't go to some big fancy gym. I love the YMCA. I think a lot of people there are, you know, just trying to be healthy. It's not really so much of a scene. So it's what I like. So I am going to go to the gym, I'll let you know how my blood sugars do there. So we really had a good laugh about that one because we were watching it back and Steve ends with Jeremy's probably in and out and then cut to me going to in and out was like kind of amazing. And yeah, I didn't go to in and out to try to like, I don't know, bamboozle you guys that I, you know, I'm eating crazy things like that. It's just actually what I do. But you skipped the fries and you, you said, is this good for me? No, but I don't think it was that bad, to be honest. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like a ton of calories and I, I liked it and it actually worked out well. But, you know, setting up exercises is, is extremely difficult. And, you know, when I went to the gym that day in the afternoon, I was thinking about it since the morning, really. You know, how am I going to plan? And that can be hard. You know, you have to think that far ahead. And what happens if something happens and you don't go to the gym? Then my blood sugars would have been a million. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's something that's always on your mind. Well, the other thing that, you know, you talk about is, you know, ways you can plan for the gym. Your plan that day was to eat a little bit, uh, have a good lunch, take a little less insulin, so you rise a little bit and then work it down. But you can always just... Put your pump and your hybrid closed loop on exercise mode at least an hour before you get there so you don't have to eat something mm -hmm. ahead of time. So there's different ways to deal with it. Yeah, we did a whole exercise video, which you guys should check out on our video vault. So let's keep going and see how we did after the gym. Hi, this is Dr. Bill Polanski, and proper etiquette is filming your buddy, Dr. Steve Edelman. Look at those guns doing his oh. dips. So beautiful. All right, everybody, I'm at the gym with my friend Bill. Had a high blood sugar after lunch, rage bolus. Now I'm 179 dropping, but since I'm not doing aerobic activity, I should not drop too bad. See you later. Okay, so post-exercise, I actually did really well. And I'm saying that because that doesn't usually happen. So my blood sugar is 115 straight across. Did my two units and worked off my double-double. By the way, a normal dose, if I didn't exercise for that double-double, would probably be like eight to 12 units. So it is kind of nice to use exercise to maybe help you cheat a little bit every once in a while. And again, I don't usually have days like this. So I'm thinking that maybe I should kind of be more aware of my blood sugars and not necessarily film it all the time. But man, kind of thinking about it and filming it has really helped me stay in range. So it's been an interesting experiment for me. Anyways, off, back to work. 
So I gotta admit, that was a little unfair that you had help, somebody else filming you and, you know, doing your dips. And what we, that's, we didn't that's see true. is that there's actually a rope on your back that was helping you <laughs> to do some of those. So anyways, it wasn't fair. But we actually did well with yeah. going to the gym. Yeah, I just want to say that Bill, when he does dips, he puts that seat down and gives him 80 pounds of help. Mm. And I told him he'll, he'll get there someday. But I, as you can see, I do three sets of 15 dips. Oh, my gosh. So if you're watching, Bill, screw you. Um, <laughs> so, all right. For this next one, we actually have a special entry from Steve. Uh, that he filmed. I'm, I'm really glad you did. And again, this wasn't something you did for the purposes of of this experiment. This is another thing that kind of happened in daily life. So a special entry here from Steve Edelman. Yep. Show it all. Hey, everyone. It's mid-afternoon, and you're not going to believe this, that I'm even sharing this with you. I had a visit with a plastic surgeon. He is the owner of the building of our new TCOID office. So I wanted to get my little gobble chin repaired. Every time Eric, our ultimate producer and director, has me sitting, he has me going 90 degrees. And if it bothers me, I want to get it fixed. And so I told him I was diabetic. We talked about the risks of infection or any other issues. I told him my control was good, thanks to hybrid closed loop systems. My A1C is right around seven or a little bit less. And he told me that uh, no problems with infection, no adverse effects on my kidney. It's a two hour or less outpatient procedure right here in a surgery center. And of course our office is in that direction. And um, if it makes me feel better as a person to get rid of this little flap, this <laughs> rudder that you see on the bottom of sailboats, call it what you like but I am getting rid of it. Dr. Pettis wanted to take a staple gun and just take care of it, put some super glue and duct tape, but I told him, no way are you coming near me. Well, Steve, I'm glad you did that. Thank you for you know, letting us in. And, but I think it's an important topic. I mean, one, you know, about the, the surgery you're having done, but also all the things that we have to think about. What's my blood sugar is going to do during this operation? Can I have a CGM? You know, all these things that you mentioned, kidney function, et cetera. So at any time you go in for a procedure or certainly a surgery, these are things that need to be on your mind and people need to plan ahead for these things and never assume that your healthcare team or the surgeons know what they're doing when it comes to diabetes. You really have to educate them. Yeah, and you know what? I hope you don't think I'm too vain, but it does bug, it does bug me. Yeah, well, I didn't <laughs> notice it before, but now I can't take my eyes off of it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe uh, you could be there during the surgery. Yeah, maybe. Hold bring, your hand. Bring your staple gun. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. I'm a lot cheaper. Sur get surgical assistant fees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so rolling on, after that consultation, Steve went to dinner. So let's see how he uh, handled that meal. I'm at dinner now with my beautiful girlfriend, uh, who you, unfortunately you can't see because she's taking the video. Um, I had a nice appetizer, um, 147 diagonal up. Gave myself two little boluses, like three, three and a half minutes. The appetizer was burrata and olive tampanade, both basically no carbs. And I did eat a little bit of bread. It's only my third refill, so not too much. And I'm drinking a whiskey sour with bourbon. Whiskey sours aren't that bad. I asked the bartender, very nice lady, to hold off on the simple syrup. So it's my second one. That's my limit because I am a good back, I'm a terrible backseat driver when I drink too much. And this is penny pasta with sausage. I'm definitely only going to eat half and eat the other half for lunch tomorrow at clinic. And so far, the day is going pretty good for me. I have not broken the 180 barrier. Well, I gotta say now I'm getting a little angry. I mean, you had Bill, <laughs> film, Bill film you at the gym. You got Jamie filming you like at dinner. I didn't know like film crews were allowed in this experiment. I'm doing these like selfies. <laughs> um, but again, I love that you have this. So do you eat like that every day? No, I mean, clearly you're going out. This is, you know, maybe not a typical thing. And that you're eating this whole big bowl of pasta. I mean, I can't think of more of a blood sugar killer than that with bread. And then you got your whiskey drink on top of it. So, you know, we should all eat healthy like anybody else. But every once in a while, we, we splurge. Yeah, you know, I did eat half my pasta. Oh, thank God. And I was getting pretty cocky. And I did have a little extra bread. And, you know, it's hard to resist at restaurants. Yeah. So. Well, how did the rest of that night go? You'll see. Hmm. Well, it's... One o'clock in the morning, almost. 
I woke up and look at my blood sugar, went to bed, it was about 165. Now it's 278 and at least it's not climbing. And uh, I'm in the bathroom because I don't want to wake up my uh, girlfriend, Jamie. Going to give myself a rage bolus and hope I don't overdo it. But I guess I was getting kind of cocky that I was doing so well today. And um, this is a freaking pain. Well, folks, um, I do have gastroparesis. Anybody with diabetes over 10 years may have partial, but mine's pretty bad. And when I eat, pasta, even though I ate half, but I ate some bread, you know what? I went to bed at 160 flat. And then of course I wake up in the middle of the night, 270 something. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's a freaking pain. And for those of you that have gastroparesis, it is tough to deal with, but you know what? Gave myself a bolus, came back down. And I think it's just something that uh, we have to learn to live with. Yeah. So you can see here that, you know, our blood sugars are not flat all the time. And even if you don't have gastroparesis, you eat a high fat, high protein meal, pizza, something like that, same thing happens to me. And then guess what, your, your alarm, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, you don't sleep as well, you got a bolus, but then you might go low, and those nights are the worst, the kind of like the high, the low, you just wake up feeling like crap. So Who I says you free. don't have gastroparesis? You no. acted like you don't. Well, I don't, I don't know if I do, thanks for that vote of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> trying to wish You've, how long you had diabetes? On me. Long time. Know, six months. <laughs> um, so anyways, well, it, again, we didn't plan this, but both of us started off really well. Steve Knight went to hell with his gastroparesis and my next day just wasn't great at all. So let's show what happened to me the next day. Okay. Hi everybody. Day two of this little experiment. I did really good day one, which was awesome because I think I was just paying more attention. Day two, you know, I did good overnight and then I just wanted to show you kind of what happened this morning. So I got my clarity report up here and this was me overnight. You can see, you know, at midnight it was 152 and the system kind of brought me down into range, woke up with a good number. And then I don't usually do this, but I absolutely crushed a breakfast burrito this morning. And I did my best to like estimate my carbs, um, but you can see, you know, my blood sugars went up, not like tremendously high, but what's frustrating is this like just ledge I've been on. So this started at like 7 a.m. Now here we are almost like 11 a.m., like four hours. And trust me, I've been doing these little like kind of micro boluses. I don't really think it's like fake carbs because I was kind of accounting for some fat and protein in the, in the, the burrito. So entering, you know, 15 grams of carbs more an hour later or so. And now I got about eight units on board, so hopefully I don't crash. But I think we can all relate that these like shelves you get stuck on, just these stubborn highs can be really annoying. And this isn't even that bad of one. Um, 180 I can live with it, but it's like when it's those 250s and you're just, you can't bring it down, that's what drives you nuts. Anyways, that's my update for now. Talk to you later. All right, so quick update. I mentioned that I was on this kind of stubborn high and guess what? It's still going. If you can see it, this is the last six hours or so. Where now I've been between 180 and 200. When I got to 220, I actually took eight units of a Frezza, inhaled insulin, came down a little bit. So here I am now. I haven't eaten since breakfast. I've been bolusing. My blood sugars aren't coming down. This is where I start wondering, is my pump, you know, working okay? Do I have a clogged infusion set? Why is my blood sugars not coming down when I haven't really eaten? So I'm going to probably give it another, you know, hour maybe a little bit and then just change my my infusion set if this keeps happening because like i said i haven't eaten there's no real reason to be high i took a fezza so type 1 diabetes man it's happening here right here san diego california yeah so there was my bad day you know and it just i was on that shelf as i called it for a long time and we were just talking about when your blood sugars get high you get more insulin resistant so Sometimes, you know, a unit of insulin will do the trick when your blood sugar is 150, but if it's 250, it might take two, three, four, you know, you, you never know. And I took some of it didn't really like budge. So it's like one of those situations, like what's going on? And eventually, of course, I did crash. So it's like, where was that insulin going or was it getting absorbed? I don't know what was happening, but that was just, it's just such a pain. It's probably one of the most frustrating things us type ones live with. When you get high, you give yourself bolus, bolus, you go, and who likes to be high? Mm -hmm. And you do that rage bolus, and my girlfriend always says, don't overdo it. And I said, I got it. And then, of, of course, you crash. And that's, that's so common. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and I'm thinking just kind of like summing this up, like, you know, somebody without diabetes is watching this and be like, holy crap, you guys think about these things all the time? Every day. And we showed you just a fraction of the, like, the, the thought processes that are going through our heads. So if you're living with type 1, you obviously get it. And hopefully there's um, some comfort in knowing that you're not alone, that Steve and I know a lot about this disease. We're freaking endocrinologists for and crying We charge out loud. a lot for our patients when they come to see us. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> um, we have all the, the whiz-bang tools and still the highs and lows. And, you know, I love you going to 270 and then me, you know, like eventually crashing. Um, but guess what? Also had a good day eating some freaking in and out and going to the gym. So, like, you know, we had some wins. Back for that. Yeah, we definitely did. Um, and I literally, like, you know, sat down. I was like, well, this is going to take a, a week or more to get all these, like, things in here. I did two days and I was like, this is more than enough. And we actually cut out stuff because we didn't need it all. Like, we didn't have enough time. So there's just all these things that we're thinking about all the time. Um, then we're glad we actually filmed and shared with people. Yeah, you know, it's, it's hard living with type 1. And like you said, even with all the fancy tools and the hybrid closed loops, we still get high, we still get low. Dealing with exercise and dealing with high blood sugars, um, you know, it's tough. Yeah, and Diabetes is, is a crapshoot sometimes. But, you know, big picture, we're doing well, we're healthy, living well with type 1. You just got to roll with the punches as much as you can, keep trugging, and eventually another day, you know, hopefully a good day will come back around. But... Hope you all enjoyed watching it. Steve was fun. I really watched, you know, really liked watching your clips too. So thanks for doing that. Thank you. Thank Next you. time Thank you see you. him, he's not going to have the rudder. All right. <laughs> I don't know. See you later. <laughs>